Welcome Yamhill County to Speaking Frankly. I'm your host, Howie Harkema, and our tagline is, and how we do win. <laughs> Today I have a great um, guest with me. It is Courtney Terry from the McMinnville Public Library, but she has another job as well f with the Public Library. Welcome so much. Thank you, Happy. Thank you for being here. So our topic today is Poetry Night at the Gallery at Ten Oaks. Yes. Woohoo! I know. It's wonderful. So how did this begin? So um, it's been a while, uh, <laughs> about 2012, I'd say. Um, I was approached by a patron at the library upstairs information desk where we always welcome people with questions. With love. With love and yeah, questions, yes. yes. Um, and that person was looking for, um, they were a veteran. They had had some um, kind of PTSD and um, they were really looking, they had um, started writing poetry and they were really looking for a space to be able to share that poetry with other people. Cool. Particularly in an open mic. And um, after some research, we found at that at that time, there really wasn't an ongoing poetry open mic program that was happening in McMinnville or really even Yam Hill County. Right. Um, and so that started it. We spent the first four or five years with the open mic um, at the Velvet Monkey Tea Room, which was fantastic. And then as of, um, it'll be two years this January, we have been at the gallery at Ten Oaks. Awesome. Two for two years now. Yeah, it'll be. We'll have a party. It's an exciting event. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get involved personally in this? I was the librarian at the desk when this patron <laughs> approached, uh, but also part of my role at the library is to do adult programming. And um, I love, we're a library, so any way that we can um, have literary programs, we, we love to encourage that. And it was, it needed organizing and that was something a librarian could do. Awesome. <laughs> so Poetry Night at the Gallery at Ten Oaks is hosted by the McMinnville Public Library. Yes, and me most of the time. <laughs> most of the time. It's, it's been so, it's so fun. So are you a poet as well? No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> a wannabe poet, maybe? Actually, that, that sounds about right. Um, I think I, I did probably write some really highly emotional stuff in my early 20s. I think there are a lot of like bird metaphors and <laughs> cages and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but honestly, every time I attend a poetry night afterwards, I always feel inspired that if, if I was like I could, like knowing that I could write a poem. And I will say I've attempted it a few times, but as of yet, I have not read any of my own. Maybe the, someday. I hope so. <laughs> I hope that you feel comfortable enough with yourself to do it yes. and be who you are in the poetry. Thank you. Which would be very good. Yes. Although if it's anything like my social media presence, it <laughs> mostly be like dog related because that's pretty much. <laughs> I understand. We have a little 30 pound dog, so oh. I get it. <laughs> so there is wine tasting as well yes. at this poetry reading. Yep. And, but it is still child friendly. Yeah, so the, um, we just ask if you have a valid ID, like to show it, but the, the tasting area is in uh, one room and then most of the reading happens in another room. So it works out really well. We, um, it's especially great because that means we can have uh, students. We've had high school students come and read their poetry before and it's always so amazing um, to hear from kind of the the younger sure younger poetry community of Yamhill County that's very interesting yeah. um, so when does this occur so the poetry nights happen the first Thursday of every month except for in July and August um, so starting in September first Thursday of every month at six o'clock at the gallery and why was the gallery chosen and how did you do that it was um, when we decided we were going to move away from uh, Velvet Monkey, who had in the been, basement. Yes. yes, in the basement, who had been so wonderful, but then were 
just like it was time for a break, which I totally understood. Um, we we wanted to find a place that was um, welcoming, that had a lot of that kind of creative energy. And um, Dan and Nancy Morrow, who own Gallery of Ten Oaks, have been in the community for so long. And tell 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 other people who may not know why they've been involved so long. Yes. So the the house that the gallery is in um, yes. previously was movie time video for a very very long time very before long time. that um, and then Dan and Nancy are also which is funny considering they were the owners of the video store um, they're very involved with like the McMinnville short film festival right. and um, so they wear many hats yes they do including wine tasting yes <laughs> <laughs> so pre-booked poets four months in advance that's a personal accomplishment of mine I know. actually <laughs> we do right now we have um, poets set up for all the way through December and so I'm really excited um, sometimes it can be a, a scramble trying to find a poet right before the event which I try really hard not to do but um, but if somebody wants to be in uh, uh, be uh, uh, at the poetry reading and read one of their poems do they contact you oh um, um, if they want to come just for the open mic it's we just would welcome them to show up if they would like to be um, so the way the format works is we usually have one featured poet and they do a reading it's usually like 20 to 30 minutes sure. and then um, after the featured poet reads we open it up for the open mic from the audience members and that goes on however many people that we have and so um, if they are interested in being a featured reader, they can definitely get in touch with me at the library. But if and I think we have a phone number for your contact. Yes. And I believe it. Yeah, that's it right there. Yep, five five <laughs> five four. Yep. That's my extension. Um, but if they just want to come and share their poetry in the open mic, we absolutely come. We want them to join us. So there's these gentlemen here. Yes. Um, can you talk about them just for a moment? So um, we have Tom and Mike and Bob. And Mike and Bob are actually two of our Poetry Night regulars. They've been attending for a long, long time. Um, the three of them had put together a, uh, they were beats, nope, bass, bongos, and beats. Or beats, bass, and bongos. Or one of those. One, a combo of Three those. Beats. Yes. yes. Um, so it's Tom is on the stand up bass and Mike plays the drums and then Bob does readings and they'll alternate. Um, but basically they'll read their poetry and a lot of times it's Bob's poetry that he's written and then it's accompanied by the beats, bongos and bass. Yes. And um, <laughs> it was, I remember one of the, we've had them a few times at poetry nights and it's always so fun because then they offer afterwards for anyone in the open mic, if they would like a musical accompaniment, it's available. Um, and I, there was one time when somebody was reading um, a poem and they had specific, they knew that it was going to be the beats and bongos. Sure. So they had written a poem kind of in a beat style and so it was very it was very authentic well I have seen these gentlemen on the writing life with Stephen Long yes and and they're fun yes they're like beat mix or yes something. they it's are awesome. it's so much fun and um, there's they just put so much of their personality into it and yes yeah, they uh, we should really we should have them back for an open mic. I think that's a good idea <laughs> and and Mike Santanay is a very good poet Yes, and um, he frequently reads um, haiku and tankas, which is a kind of lesser known Japanese poetry style. Right. And um, they're just, they're always fantastic. So, so who are some of the other regulars that come? We have, um, so Bob Sennheiser and Mike Santanay. Um, we've got a guy named Bruce who is also phenomenal. Um, Lucy, there's, it's a it's a growing group of regulars. Good. There's like, I'm and so they're developing this regular scenario over and over. Yes, and you know sometimes they have new poems and it's really exciting. Sometimes they don't. A few times people have read poems that may, maybe they read in the past. There's well, definitely a couple um, greatest hits. 
And Bob and has a poem about the library that I <laughs> like to hear. <laughs> And Ellen Summerfield has come in yeah. and, and shared some of her poetry. Yes, she's been a featured reader um, twice, I think. And that's fantastic. I love when we can find featured poets who are from our community because so many people come out to support them. Um, definitely Ellen has been one of the uh, full packed house of yes, poetry I'm sure night, of it. I'm which sure is of it. exceedingly exciting. I think my wife has all of her books. Yes. So. I'm not surprised at all. Do you find it interesting um, how many poets are in the community? Yes. Well, and I get, well, I said yes, but then at the same time kind of thinking, I feel like Yamhill County and McMinnville has such an amazing artistic presence anyway. Yeah. Like we have writers, we right. have artists. And so um, it's more just giving these folks an opportunity to like showcase on a, a at art gallery stage, I guess. So talk about local poetry via Arley Press. Yeah, um, so a lot of times when I'm looking for a potential uh, featured reader, I troll the <laughs> <laughs> I troll those poetry presses. Uh, yes, and I look for... Um, Arley Press is one of my favorites, and we've had a lot of their poets um, at our poetry nights um, because it's a it's kind of like a, a, a co-op press. Sure, sure. So um, and they are mostly drawing from um, readers who are in the Willamette Valley. So Salem, Corvallis, McMinnville. Um, we've had a few McMinnville folks be included in that press and. Um, I so these are published poets. Yes, we. I do. Um, if to be a featured reader, we, I do like it when they have published in print. But on the other, I mean, nowadays there's so many. There's online journals and there's websites. There's so many different ways that sure. you can get out there and get your poetry published. So, so um, PDF files are, are published poetry as well. Right. So, and yes. So technically, yes. Um, I do. When we do have a featured reader who is a published author, it's also an exciting opportunity for them to bring their books, and we allow them to sell them. So a lot of times, um, it's a just an extra way to support the reader by Absolutely. selling their books. And we've um, that's one big way. I every for every featured reader, I always try and buy a copy of their poetry book, and then we put a special celebration sticker in it for the library. Oh, awesome. So now on our poetry shelf in the library, which is Dewey Decimal number 811, <laughs> for the record, uh, <laughs> they, we have all these books, and when you flip it open, it says, you know, in celebration of poetry night on this date, and it's, it's gotten to be quite the collection, and it, it's really exciting. So if you go to a concert... Yes. Um, you get merch. Yeah. You, you buy merch because yeah. <laughs> that's what it's about. Right. So for the poets, that has, that merch has to be really important to them yes. to see that people really enjoyed their poetry. Right. And uh, it's, uh, it's exciting, too, because a lot of times they'll, if they have a more recent book, they'll read poetry out of that more recent book. And so it's when you're when you have the book later and you're going back through it, it's you see these and you say, oh, I remember that one. I loved it. But then there's also new material in there that you, it just. It yeah, just you can't get to everything in one night. There's oh, no, no way. That would be. And then people get to go back and look online and see what else they've had out there. Yes. And, and maybe purchase that as well. Yeah. And some poets um, make, I can't, I think they're called broad, broad sheets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where it's like a, a like almost like a letterpress printed, and it'll be like one of their poems with a piece of art on it. And I'm a bit of a sucker for those. So, do you try to select poets that are local to the area, Yamhill County at least, or do you go outside of that scope as well? Both. I like to prioritize the Yamhill County poets just because they're local. But um, lately, I've my reach has kind of gone farther and farther out, and. Um, one of those reasons is we want to bring in uh, more poets from a diverse background. Sure. Which, um, so we are, are kind of reaching out to Portland because there's just so... Slam poetry and all of it. Yes, yeah. there's just so much more yeah. going on. And most people have no problem driving an hour down to do a reading in McMinnville. Well, we're no less weird than Portland. Honestly. McMinnville, I mean, here we are in right? the midst of 
wine country. <laughs> so, yeah. I can Little see do it. they know. No, they have no idea. <laughs> the poetry underground in this county. <laughs> So an honorarium is actually offered, but usually not accepted. Yes. Talk about that. Well, and I, I mean, <laughs> it's, maybe it's the generous nature of poets, um, but we're always happy to offer an honorarium to our poets that come and read because, like a lot of artists, they're you know the way that they generate income. You mean um, starving artists? Maybe starving struggling poets. Struggling poets. Struggling poets, or just. <laughs> but that's the thing. I think. Um, you know, not it's putting a monetary value on it, but it's also making sure that they're getting paid for the work that they're doing. Sure. Like they're creating art, and you you just have to support that. And um, we're our so our friends of the library organization um, is the ones that cycle that money through. Yes, and so and that's we uh, use that to buy the um, the copies of the books. Sure. And but I know, but seriously, poets. You can ask for an honorary. Well, you know, songwriters are poets, too. Right. Um, a lot of lyrics that are written by songwriters, like myself, mm -hmm. um, work as read poetry. So I, I guess I'm never surprised that certain poets turn into songwriters. Oh, no. It's just, yeah. The, it goes both directions, just too. Just the lyrical way of... Yep. The yeah. flow. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, if you've ever heard anybody do a dramatic reading of Journey lyrics, you, oh, yeah. you know. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> yes. And, and I have. <laughs> so how many poets usually turn out for uh, the nightly read? We, so we've got a core group of 10 to 15 regulars that come, and then it fluctuates kind of depending on the month. Um, sometimes we get a bunch of new readers and it's really exciting and then sometimes when we have very well known and beloved poets will standing room only. we'll pack the house it's yeah. yeah that's I love that when it happens I bet um, so when you do have these poetry nights mm -hmm. um, are, are you allowed to walk around the gallery as well and see the artwork that's in there? Yeah, we, we definitely encourage that. Maybe not during the reading itself, but, bef yeah. <laughs> but before and after, because um, they have that gorgeous upstairs space. I know. And they're, I mean, they've literally got arts in the closets in that house, and it's... I'd like to see the closets. It's, I mean, it's a snug fit, but it's, yeah. it's just full of art. <laughs> So when somebody comes in and they do a poetry re reading, um, it c sometimes can help the library in, in certain ways. Yes. Let's talk about that. Y yes. It does. It does. So they can take their honorarium and donate it back to the library. Oh. <laughs> do you yes. Yes. And that's why um, a lot of times the poets don't ask for an honorarium, and so that's money that we just get to keep in the, um, and provide more adult programming. In your general fund. Yes, yes. and so it's a specific for adults, so any kind of author visits that we have, um, our summer and winter reading programs, the poetry nights, um, kind of those different educational programs that the library offers throughout the year, a lot of, most of that is Pretty much all of that is from our Friends of the Library. Yes. And other fun. And talk about stuff. Friends of the Library for a moment. They're a fantastic group of people. Um, they, they, they're, they're our friends. They support us. They're the ones that run the book sale. Right. Twice monthly. Um, and they, they are just so supportive of the library and receptive. We ask them for a lot of. Well, things. one of my best friends is Joyce Walcott. Oh. And so. She is a wonderful uh, library and, volunteer. And, and she's also a friend of the library. Yes. Yes, she and Bob. And Bob. Yes, yes. they've Bob and Joyce. Yes, they've contributed so much. Yep. And that's it's fun to see. There's a lot of I think there's a lot of crossover between the friends of the library and our longtime volunteers. Imagine that. And it's I mean, it's wonderful. We're um, actually this week the library is hosting a volunteer appreciation celebration mm -hmm. for our library volunteers which is always really exciting for us because our the library could not manage without when them. you say celebration what all is entailed in this um <laughs> have, have you gotten your volunteer hours I, in howie i have none oh. in, other than the things i do in community right. 
<laughs> well, I could probably like fit you in for a well, shelving hour if you want yeah, to get, there, get a VIP that. invite. So talk about the fundraiser for the library on uh, Friday's uh, third on third. Yes, uh, so that was started by Mike Santana. Um, he so on the third Fridays of every month, the third on third. Right. They set up in the Ransom Wine and, and Distillery Company tasting room, which shares the space with Pirano and Daughters. So it's on Third Street, kind of right next to Hotel or, or right next to Nick's Italian right. Cafe, um, and uh, so Mike and usually um, occasionally Bob, Lucy, Bru a lot of our regulars. Not um, that. Yes, <laughs> uh, they set up with typewriters. Not always electric. I think they're the. Just, Ooh, do you call that old even timey? Even better. It's, I don't think it should yes, be old timey. Yes, manual typewriters. Manual typewriters. Yeah. Yes. So they'll set up. And then anyone who comes in can approach them. They can ask any one of the poets if um, to write a poem, and it can be any topic that they so want. So my dog. Yes. Um, and then they we give them about an hour. I say we. They are wonderful, amazing volunteer poets. And I don't on know the they, <laughs> and on the fly. Yeah. In one hour, they'll write a poem for that person. And so the person can go and enjoy the rest of Third on Third, and then they'll come back. And uh, we ask for a $5 donation per poem. Which is nothing. Which is nothing, and people are often more generous than that. Good. But um, since they've, they started doing this last fall, um, and since it's usually at the Poetry Nights, we've started hearing some of these poems they've created and sure. it's just phenomenal um there was a woman who asked for a poem she could read at her daughter's wedding which i feel like is maybe calling it in a little bit but thank goodness it was in the right hands yeah there was a beautiful poem that was written <laughs> but yeah <laughs> could be a little scary I'm just saying but <laughs> it's fine they're lucky it would it worked out for the best good because i don't a lesser poet maybe not but um you know, three uh, seventy something women who are having a girls' weekend. They wanted a poem. Oh, that could be about a dangerous poem. Yeah, uh, <laughs> right. It was a funny poem. <laughs> and you know, dinosaurs, fishing, like it really the whole gamut. Anything, and so it's a really fun. It's <laughs> it's fun for them. It's fun for the poets. It's fun for the poetry night audience that gets to hear them <laughs> afterwards. But, and then all of the proceeds that they make gets donated back into a fund with the Friends of the Library, and we use that money specifically to offer honorariums and um, purchase the poetry books. So we want that to go kind of right back into the poetry programming. And so these fundraisers occur from September through June. Is that correct? I, I believe so, yes. yes. This is the... Um, we last fall and then I think they took a break over mid winter and then they started up again in March but so talk about the gallery and the artwork that's in the gallery and some of the poets that have written about a specific painting yes um, or so sculpture or right or right. mixed media yeah, when yeah, all the yeah. things um, so it's a the program that we have kind of on a quarterly basis the next one will be coming up in October is a paintings of poems and we use uh, it's ecrustic poetry. Ecrustic. It has an ek. A, that's a cool yes. title. I know. I had no ecrustic. idea it was a thing until it turns out it is. <laughs> <laughs> but um, basically, we invite everyone in, and then we give them forty-five minutes to search, walk all through the gallery, find a piece of art that you know calls to them, like really appeals to them. And then they Ooh. have, yes, like, oh, yes. you poem, yes. <laughs> and then uh, we give them 45 minutes to write a poem, and then they share it. And it's um, it, it's a bit different from our regular poetry oh boy, night. howdy. <laughs> because there is that kind of like improv, like time pressure. I love that. I love it too. People get embarrassed about it's just kind of raw poetry. It's not the edited. You haven't had time to practice it. Like, yeah. And then um, so we get everybody and then we go around the gallery to the paintings that they wrote about and then they're able to, you know, they read their poem. Sure. And um, there's been a, a few different times when we've actually had the artist who created the art there Ooh. and that it was such a fantastic experience for them to actually like to hear someone else's interpretation and perception of their exactly. art exactly 
and then to put it into a poem. Because most artists write an artist statement yeah. that they put up yes. by the painting or sculpture or whatever it may be. Yes. But to have someone else interpret right. and, and write a poem about but it. To kind of keep that creative process and just, yes. And, and so when they sell the artwork, does the po poem get to go with yes. it? Yes. So after the, after the reading, we occasionally have to hunt down, but most people give it to the, us voluntarily. We take the poem and we print it out and we actually post it next to the art. So even if, if you were to go into the gallery today, you could walk around and find art that's already been featured in our Paintings to Poems that's program. That's fantastic. It's just so much fun. and It's got to be a blur to get it done in 45 minutes and, and make it rational. <laughs> yes, I know. I take a, maybe, <laughs> I take a lot of pleasure out of that I for some reason. You <laughs> but I'm not writing the poetry. I just get to walk around prod. and be like, who's ready? <laughs> <laughs> so I only have two more questions. Um, the art gallery has a relaxed, cozy atmosphere. Yes. How did you talk to these people? I know they love art. I know they love poetry. I know they love writing. But how did you get this? How I, did I, asked <laughs> him if, I, mean, I, I asked them if they were interested, and the response was just so overwhelmingly positive. Like, I don't, I don't even know if they thought about it, but it's been... And that's Dan and Nancy, um, they just, they care about the community I so know. much. They love having, you know, they've created this artistic place and then having people come in and it just, um, when, when we're there, it, it really transforms the building in a way of just having all these people and all this energy. Yeah. And it's just a perfect setting. I mean, there's, especially the room that we have the readings in is their featured artist room. So the art actually changes almost every poetry night but do you find non-poets come in to hear the poetry as well yeah we have um and they're not just spouses or partners of the people that want to really? read i know um we and then we we did at one time have a prose reading night um but we only did a few of those it it's just a little bit of a different format. Well, it might bring in different customers than right. the normal base would bring in yes. as well. Yeah. So that's great for both of them. Yeah. That's awesome. So one last question. Okay. So what is the best part of the Poetry Nights for you, Courtney? It, um, <laughs> I know. Being a facilitator. <laughs> yes. I, it's, I, this is, but it's the community. It's the people. It's um, the people that they come in and, you know, standing up in front of that room and looking out on the audience and just seeing all those people that are there and they um, have so much warmth and caring and love for the community and for poetry and we we laugh and we make connections talk about your cheeks at the end of the night on a I, really uh, good night <laughs> <laughs> uh, usually at the end of the night my face hurts because i've been smiling so much yeah but it's a good pain right? yeah and it's honestly it happens like it's it's i feel like my heart is going to explode sometimes because it's just there's so much joy and um it's just it's a wonderful community and group of people I'm sorry that we have run out of time. Thank you so much for being on today. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for jumping in and, and wanting to do this type of thing. Oh, sure. And thank you to the library. As you know, yes. we're going to have um, Ron and Nancy both in really soon. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have you and Jenny come in for the library and kind of give us a, a overview for 2020. Oh, sure. Um, and, and maybe in November. Yeah. So that would be awesome. Wonderful. So thank you very much for being on today. Thank you, Holly. And thank you for watching. If you want to get in touch with me, if you've got an idea for a show, um, you can get a hold of me at uh, Howie Harkema, all one word, at Comcast.net. I also have a Facebook page, Howie Harkema. Um, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Yes. Thank you. It was wonderful. <laughs>